Shalom Israel, Most High Christ bless. I'm Captain Naon. Shalom, Most High Christ bless, Officer Bankanaya. All right, and this is another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains. All right, and today's topic, we're gonna go in to filled with the Holy Ghost. We understand that this is a Christian saying, all right? A Christian saying that has been spread throughout the whole Christian doctrines, all right? That you're filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Ghost? That's what you have to ask yourself. Is it a feeling that you get? Is it you rolling around on the floor? Is it you running around a church? Is it you speaking in tongues? What is this Holy Spirit and this Holy Ghost that the churches say that they have that we can't get? Okay, because I never got it. I never got the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. All right, I wouldn't run around a church. I wouldn't fall on the ground and a lady wasn't coming to put a, a, a sheet over me. Okay, so understanding what is the Holy Ghost? We go, you go get an understanding today. All right, we go see what spirit they rolling in, because it's not the spirit of God. Um, let's let's start off with Mark nine and twenty. All right, because is God working with them? No, it's, we go show you through the through the scriptures that they have spirits on them. All right, that's not the spirit of God in those churches. It's the spirit of Satan. All right, let's read that. This is the book of Mark, chapter nine, verse twenty. Uh huh. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. So this is a man bringing his son to Christ that had spirits on him. He had demons on him. All right. And that's a lot of people in the churches. They have spirits on them. Whatever it may be, their life, their past, that they've been through in life, these things are spirits that's on them. All right. And they're allowing Satan to come in to direct them and move them in a certain way that's not of God, all right? Read that one more again. This is the book of Mark chapter nine, verse 20. Uh -huh. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. All right, because that spirit recognized Christ, first off, all right? And understanding the, the Satan, he knows the angels. He knows Christ. All right. He knows the the uh, prophets. All right. So jump down to verse twenty five. Verse twenty five. Mm -hmm. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, mm -hmm. he rebuked the foul spirit. You did what? Rebuked the foul spirit. He rebuked the foul spirit to do what? Go ahead. Saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Right. Because this spirit had this young boy uh, tormented, all right? Like a lot of our people, they're tormented, all right? They go to these churches, they're indoctrinated with lies and the things that go on throughout their life and throughout their day and the things that they've been through, the Most High is allowing Satan, just like he did Job, to enter into their life, to be able to be a, a, a torment unto them, all right? And this, this precept that we're reading it's something that goes on in the church where they're running around the church, they're falling on the floor, the, the sister's coming and putting a little white cloth over them. I, I don't understand it. That's something that I could never catch. Right. I could never catch the Holy right, Ghost. Right, right. Okay? Everybody caught it except me. Okay? So this is showing you that this is not a spirit of God, right. but a spirit of Satan. All right? A foul spirit that's upon our people all right um from there so that's one type of spirit that's uh, amongst our people in the churches all right these holy ghost filled churches mm. that's it right right so what i'm showing you is that that's not the spirit of god so let's go to something else that they say if you're doing this god is working with you you have the holy ghost on you you have the holy spirit my brother if you're speaking in tongues is that of god Speaking in tongues. Not the way that the Bible talks about right. it, but the way that man talks about it. The Christian. The Christian say when you're saying uh, wap bop baloo bop, or wap bam boom, or boom shakalaka, or whatever the, whatever they be saying, okay, that they talking to God, that, they, that, they, that they're saying something to God. Them 
whoever the person is, and God are communicating. That's not happening. That's something that man has taught you, all right? And you've done unbeknownst to yourself. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 28 and 11. I'm going to show you really what the tongues are, all right? Speaking in tongues is not that, okay? That's, again, Satan, okay? Because you can't understand what the hell you're saying. Nobody can't understand what you are saying, all right? Let's read that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 11. Mm -hmm. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. He said, with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people, to this people. So another tongue is going into what? Another language. Let's get the precept over in, uh, in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 14. Let's get that. Because, there's, you know, everything written a fourth time, written for our learning. Paul is going to quote what we just read in Isaiah 28. All right? 14. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 21. Uh -huh. In the law, it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet, for all that, they will not hear me, so he saith the Lord. Right. So he said he will speak. He said, read the top part again. In the law, it is written. In the law, it's written. What we just read in Isaiah. Isaiah 28 and 11 says the same thing, basically. Maybe word a little different, but it's saying the exact same thing. All right, keep going. With men of other tongues. Men of other tongues. So once you understand the Bible, right? You, it's broken down precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, new and old. It all correlates together. We all, Israel, was scattered abroad to many different countries and lands. We speak what? Different languages. Right. So this Bible had to be interpreted into other languages. So if you go to Haiti, they're going to have what? A French Bible, all right? You go to uh, Puerto Rico, uh, Brazil, Central America, they're going to have what? Spanish Bibles, right. right? Because that's their language of origin, all right? They speak Spanish. They're conquerors, okay? The Spaniards. So now from there, uh, go to Acts 2. Acts 2 and what I want. Uh, Acts 2 and 5. Let's just start at 5. This is the book of Acts. Chapter 2, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So these were Jews, devout men that kept the commandments out of what? Every nation under heaven. Why? Because we scattered abroad. Why? Because we came from afar to come to where? Jerusalem. To keep the feast of uh, Pentecost. Go ahead. Verse 6. Now when this was noise abroad, mm -hmm. the multitude came together and were confounded because that they heard every, they heard every man, I'm sorry, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. In his own language. You see that? So they understood each other's language. All right. Uh, keep going. Verse 7. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, mm -hmm. Behold, or not all these which speak Galileans. Right. Go ahead. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. So they heard them speak what? Hebrew. They heard him speak their language in which they were born. All right. So uh, so that's what it's going into. The languages or the, the tongues is going into the languages. All right. So from there, go to... Uh, Romans 7 and 12. All right, Romans 7 and 12, because this is another thing that Christians don't understand is that what? The Holy Ghost. All right. What's holy to God? What's holy? All right, let's read that. This is the book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. It said, the commandment, it says, wherefore the law. Is holy the law 
the law, statutes, and commandments, that's what's holy to God. So when Christians use the words of holy, sanctified, right. filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Spirit, so on and so forth, blessed, covered in the blood of Jesus, all these things, these phrases they use, they do not understand what's coming out of their mouth. All right? The same with, uh, go back to 1 Corinthians 14 and go to 26. The same with what they're saying. So when they're saying these things out of their mouth, the wah ba 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 the boom bam bam whatever they don't understand what they're saying let's read that this is a book of first corinthians chapter 14 verse 26 uh -huh. how is it then brethren when ye come together every one of you had they song had they doctrine had they tongue mm -hmm. had they revelation had they interpretation let all things be done unto edifying right these things that we're doing which is to sing the psalms right had the doctrine mean understanding to break this, that, and the third down. Uh, a tongue, a tongue means speaking different languages. It said, and had revelation to reveal things. Again, going back to the doctrines, precept upon precept, the understanding, the water growing, so on and so forth. Today's time. So understanding is going to, it said, let all things be done unto edifying. So who are you edifying when you're speaking in this? Unknown tongue. Right. No one. All right. Keep reading. Verse 27. Uh -huh. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, mm -hmm. that by course and let one interpret. So how he go interpret something, right. meaning break it down if he don't understand what you're saying. Right. It doesn't make sense. Ask yourself that. All right. Go up to somebody that in church and they saying all this crazy stuff. Ask them what they just said. They're not going to know. Keep going. Verse 28. But if there be no interpreter. So no one to explain what you just said. If this brother speak French, I'm going to need somebody that speaks French to interpret what he just said to me. It makes sense. Go ahead. But if there be no interpreter, mm -hmm. let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. All right. So it said let him keep silent in the church. So that person, brother or sister, shouldn't even be talking in the church, all right? Not even s saying what they're saying because nobody understands them. Who are they edifying? No one, all right? So let's go back to the holy, holy, the, what's holy? Deuteronomy 28 and 9, all right? Deuteronomy 28 and 9, we're going to show you what's holy to God, all right? You got it? Yes, sir. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 9. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he had sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and to walk in his ways. Read that one more again. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 9. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. You say, a holy people. We are that holy people, the children of Israel. He set us apart from all nations to be holy like he's holy. And what makes us holy? Keep reading. As he had sworn unto thee, mm -hmm. if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. That's what makes us holy. All right. So to be holy, filled with the Holy Ghost, all these different mm -hmm. things, you have to be keeping the commandments. Okay. So from now, let's go to uh, 2 Edward 14 and 22. 2 Edward 14 22. These things are easy to be understood if you are reading your Bible, all right? You are actually going through the scriptures and breaking it down precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Go ahead. This is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 14, verse 22. Uh -huh. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me, mm -hmm. and I shall write all that, ha all that has been done in the world since the beginning which were written in thy law, that men may find thy path, and that they which will live in the latter days may live. You see that? That's what the Holy Ghost is. The commandments. This is talking about Moses. That he gave Moses the commandments to do what? To give to us, the Israelites, to keep. That we may do what? What that last part say? And that they which will live in the latter days may live. This is how we live. This is life to us. Okay? 
this is our salvation, as Christians say they say, right? Right. That's another one of them words they use that they don't have no understanding of what it means. You're not saved, okay? Let's keep going. Acts 7 and 27 and 51. All right. Acts 7 and 51. The book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 51. Mm -hmm. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. So it says, ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised of heart and ears, meaning your mind and your hearing, right? It says, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. What are we resisting? Because our fathers in the wilderness resisted the Holy Ghost, and the most I open the earth and swat them, right? We'll go see what they resisted. Go ahead. Verse 52. Mm -hmm. Which of the fathers have not your fathers persecuted? Mm -hmm. And they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the portrayers and murderers. So our forefathers, the prophets, showed the coming of the just one, Christ. They showed him coming to do what? Die for the nation of Israel. But they rejected that, just like they're doing today. It's the same thing, right. it's just a cycle. All right, keep going. Verse, verse 53, who hath received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Who have received the law? The law. Key word, law. We received the law, we just read in 2nd Ezra, by the hands of Moses and have not kept it. All right. Go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 1. Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 1. So, Israel, it's time for you to wake up. It's time for you to put on the commandments and stop playing church and start uh, applying the laws of God, the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 1. Mm -hmm. O God of my fathers and Lord of mercy, who had made all things with thy word mm -hmm. and ordained men through thy wisdom mm -hmm. that he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made mm -hmm. and order the world according to equity and righteousness and execute judgment with an upright heart. That's, this, that's basically all the commandments. That's what we're executing. That's what we're judging by. That's equity, all right, and righteousness. All of it go back to the commandments. Jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. And thy counsel who had known, except thou give wisdom, and send thy Holy Spirit from above. Send the Holy Spirit. This King Solomon talking. The Holy Spirit was sent to him. What's that? The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. All right? He knew these things, the good and the evil, right? right. Keep going. 18. For so is the ways of them which lived on the earth, were reformed mm -hmm. and men taught and men were taught the things that were pleasing unto thee and were saved through wisdom they were taught wisdom they were taught the commandments that's what's pleasing to him to thee right. the most high not for you to do your own will but his will all right so i pray y'all got something from this i pray y'all understand that the holy spirit the holy ghost is not a feeling that you get it's an action and that's the keeping of the commandments all right? So with that, we say shalom. Tune in next time. Shalom. Most high Christ bless you.
man. I ain't singing that no more. It's our walk, man. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.